This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Today, I am sitting in the beautiful bosom of Wyckoff Windows, a fabulous studio in Bushwick, New York, where together with a few friends, we are going to shoot an incredibly rare film that has not been produced since 1992. We're snapping with the legendary original Polaroid film, Type 40 series roll films. We have, by the grace of our film lord Edwin Land and generous photographer Scott Walker, acquired working Polaroid roll film that has not yet dried up, despite waiting 30 years to be exposed to light. It's time to finally let this chemistry flow. There's a lot of fun to be had and history to discuss. Let's do it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Once upon a time, Polaroid was not a company that produced film or cameras. They made optical and technical equipment for the military. They made sunglasses, and the company's bread and butter was polarizers, hence the name Polaroid, a process of filtering light waves that lessens intensity, reduces reflections, and enhances clarity of color. Turning this concept of polarization into practical glass and an expanding array of applications was an absolute grand salami for Edwin Land, whose company Polaroid boomed from their military contracts as they rapidly expanded to service the demands of World War II. But when World War II concluded in 1945, Edwin Land was sitting there like, um, like we have a lot of people working here and a lot of manufacturing capabilities, but we don't exactly have a product anymore. Joe Schmo ain't exactly in the market for military infrared binoculars. There's nothing to sell. What am I supposed to do now? This blows, but Edwin Land was ever the innovator, never to back down from such a challenge. And instead of packing up his briefcase and saying, peace out, Cub Scout, he pulled up his slacks and got cracking on Polaroid's big pivot. He thought, we've made imaging products for the military. Why don't we make and sell cameras? And why don't we do something completely nutso and have those cameras shoot film that self-develops inside the camera? That seems ludicrously impossible, right? Well, just as people once had a feast of crow for doubting his ability to mass produce polarized light products, they once again tucked their napkins into their collars and got chewing on more bird meat as he unveiled the Polaroid 95 camera with its accompanying Type 40 film, an instant developing spooled roll film that completely blew people's buns off upon its release in 1948. And he did this only three years after the conclusion of World War II. That is lightning fast innovation to go from impossible concept to incredible execution. Whereas prior, more instantaneous imaging like tintypes required a specialist and a giant camera with toxic chemistry, this was a camera that could fit in the palm of Yao Ming's hand. Anyone could use it. And there was very little risk of poisoning unless you ate the film. And the world was introduced to a brand new form of photography. Why don't we take a closer look at how these wild wonders work? All right, folks, we are sitting here at Wyckoff Windows where we are about to shoot an incredible stock of Type 47 Polaroid roll films with a bunch of special guests that are gonna shoot with us today. Whoa! Oh, wow! And then this can just tear from here? Yeah. Ooh! Wow, that's a great wow, wow. damn. So we have a lot of film to shoot. Scott has a ridiculous store of this stuff. He's been generous enough to pass them along off to us. So I, I think we have no choice but to just pop off. Oh, away. That's how that turned out awesome. Wow. Okay, so one of the most interesting things about Polaroid roll film is the way it's loaded because it's very unusual and it's very different than pack film or of course integral film. I've got Scott here. He's my, uh, he's my defense against any mistakes. I have done this a few times, but it is a very weird looking process. So it's very odd. It's very odd. It was very unnatural. It feels very, very unnatural, which is kind of nice. All right, so we're gonna crack open the camera. It's got sort of this wacky, wonderful interior that opens up like this. I mean, what is this? This is the fact that Polaroid, that this was the first thing they did is ridiculous. They were like, yeah, this makes sense. And the fact that someone in 1953 you know, could do this, well, I guess that was the power of 1953. Inside this box, you've got a coder. Uh, now, most of these Polaroid roll films had to be coded, otherwise the print would fade. Uh, they actually got rid of the coding mechanism for a lot of the future films, but Type 47 made all the way through 1992 still required a coder, and it smells 
Chef's French kiss. So now we're gonna crack this one open. Elegantly. Elegantly ripping this open. Okay, now we've got a religious scroll-esque dual bit of rolls here. We undo this a little bit just to reveal our two rolls. And you put the more narrow one here and the dummy thick one there. <laughs> and again, at first, when the first time I did this, I was like, how in the Sam Hill am I gonna figure this out? But once you do it a couple times, and the instructions are printed there right in front of you, so you can't miss it, it becomes second nature. Right, Scott? Second nature. As long as this goes well. And now the camera is closed. Uh, all of these roll film cameras are outfitted with this handy locking switch. This prevents the film from being pulled out by accident, um, if you were just a, uh, but a fool. So we'll unlock it now because we want to pull our initial tab through so that we can get ready for the first shot. And it feels spooky, but there we go. Picture number one ready to take. It says it right on the film. They tried to make this as easy as possible to understand. Um, but it's still quite complicated. Now, we just tear it off and we're ready to shoot. Whew. Oh no! Whoa, what the, what the hell? We focus with this wheel here on this particular model. Um, yeah, and so you're looking through a separate rangefinder window and viewfinder window. The rangefinder is punched in so that you can get a better idea of what's in focus and what's not. And it's showing you two different images and then merging them when it's in focus. So right now I'm just getting Colby tack sharp for this beautiful high resolution print that we're gonna make of him. Three, two, one. In a very quiet shutter, we flip this switch and that releases the film. And now we pull this through and there we go, we're processing our first shot. There we go. Now we're gonna let this cook in here. It develops inside the camera, which is very different than how 600 or peel apart film works. Uh, we're gonna actually open this up to peel it open later. So we hit this open switch that unlocks the camera itself. Then we open it and we start tearing at this paper. There he is. Damn. There he <laughs> wow. is. The like black outfit wow. on the white background looks so cool. As you can see, Polaroid was very into creating as much garbage as humanly possible. Every single thing creates a new bit of garbage. Um, but uh, that's, that's fine, because the world will last forever. <laughs> <laughs> Polaroid roll film can be looked at as the genesis of mass market instant film. Its time in the sun would soon be eclipsed by Polaroid's steam engine of innovation, but for 15 years, Polaroid roll film was their only child. They expanded the available film types to a roster of 12 remarkable options, one of which was a major breakthrough in film photography, the legendary Type 47 film, which was the highest speed mass-produced consumer film ever made at 3000 ASA. Film speeds have gone from 100 ASA to 200, to 400, to 3000, even to 10,000, to say nothing about a lot of films for special uses. Back in 1959 when it debuted, even 200 ASA film would be considered high speed. So this was a ludicrous technological leap for low light photography. Another unique trio of specialty roll films included a black and white slide film, a type for infrared photography, and the industrial 410 film, which was 10,000 ASA. I mean, come on, slap me silly. And not only that, they finally mastered color in 1963, which was easily their biggest scientific triumph in 15 years, requiring over a decade of research and development to accomplish. But 1963 was also the year roll film was about to get its biggest bonk on the head. This was the same year Polaroid introduced pack film, their peel apart successor that continued simplifying the instant photo making process and refining the results. The pack film type 108 and roll film type 48 would stand proudly together as benchmark color emulsions. But of course, there was a cheeky little monkey waiting in the wings. Ten years later, roll film would become the jealous, awkward first child as Polaroid Integral SX-70 film with its dazzling camera were introduced. Nice! Oh, there it is. Yeah, I've, so I've never shot roll film. This is my first time ever you know, personally doing it. I've seen it, um, and it's very cool. This is, a, this is a picture I made of my brother, and this film uh, expired in 1986. It was the year after I was born. Um, 
shockingly, Scott has you know had this collection of uh, a film that he's kept refrigerated, and it looks looks pretty good. So yeah, eager to shoot some more. Oh, 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 oh. Handsome, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. People have uh, taken these cameras because obviously they've been, um, they're kind of unusable now and unfortunately it's a shame to waste them. So people have been modifying them to take different types of film types, mainly Polaroid ones, so peel apart. I think more recently even the Lomo graph locks now are getting done and uh, trying to give them a second life. They're very sturdy machines and I think that they obviously, you know, have quite a good lens and people are keen to keep using them in this sort of way. Uh, I've got a Polaroid 800 roll film camera as well as a, a 110A. Um, the 800, you probably, these are roll film cameras you probably don't see converted as much for pack film. This is the camera I got that kind of started my obsession with Polaroid and I had gotten it in like 2007 right before Polaroid announced that they were um, discontinuing their film. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> good enough, good enough, I suppose. I think it's great that people are looking at ways to use these cameras uh, in the future and this Lomograph, what's it called, a Lomograph lock, or whatever yeah. it's called. I think I can see that being used now for these and I think it's great that they just get a second life. With diminished sales and a growing irrelevance to the company, Polaroid dropped color roll film in 1976. Most of the other varieties also met a grim demise in the coming decade, but for some reason, perhaps due to a desire to not completely kill off their landmark first film type, they kept the high speed type 47 and 200 speed type 42 roll films alive all the way until 1992. That would make Type 42 one of Polaroid's longest running products at a geriatric 37 years in service. And the fact that Polaroid bothered to keep making those films ticking until the 90s is more or less the reason we are sitting here today, pumping out the last breaths of this historic film that is mostly lost to time. And boy, are we savoring it. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and roll all over that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more shoots, reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.